Okay, let's talk about uh, one of the things in chapter 9, notes receivable. We talked about how notes receivable have a, uh, have a contract or a note uh, which, which describes uh, the party that's going to pay, the party that's going to be receiving the money, the amount of the note, the interest amounts, how it's going to be paid, all that stuff. Um, as you can see here, this is one of the one of the parts of the chapter. Uh, the maker is the party, the guy who's going to make, whose promises to pay. The payee is the person who's going to get paid, and the face amount is the amount the note is written for. The issuance date is amazingly enough the date a note is issued. It's incredible how they come up with these very creative terms. The date, uh, the the due date or maturity date, is the date that it has to be paid back. The term of the note is the difference between the two. The difference between the, in, the issuance date and the maturity date could be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 12 days, who knows. Uh, or it could be years. And the interest rate is the amount that you're going to be computing, uh, the, uh, the rate at which you're going to be computing interest on the face amount of the note. Okay, here is a promissory note, and this is a copyrighted image from Cengage. Uh, the face amount is $2,000. Uh, the uh, term of the note is 90 days. The, uh, uh, the uh, person who, re who uh, received, an, who uh, uh, is going to be paying it is um, the Seelig Company. Uh, they're going to pay it to Perland Company. Uh, the date of the note is March 16th. The due date is um, June the 14th. And it's going to be at 10% interest. Now, uh, March 16th to June 14th is basically 60 days, I mean 90 days, but uh, they're, they're paying 10% interest, and that interest is annualized interest. So if they kept the note for a year, they would be paying $200 in interest, but they're only paying, they're only keeping the, the note for 90 days. So 90 divided by 365 is, uh, oops times 200 basically $49 is the interest they're going to be receiving on this note okay let's figure out the due date of a note the due date is again June the 14th the date of the note is the fa the uh, issuance date is is March the 16th so there's you, you what you do is uh, we've practiced this before you take the number of days in the month subtract from it the issuance date, and that gives the, a number of days remaining in the month. That's the days that the that you're gonna that the note's gonna be alive at that point. Uh, so 15 days in March, there are 30 days in April, 31 days in May, and then you go to the 14th of June. So add 14 more days, add all up all that up, and you get to 90 days. Oopsie Daisy, we got got kicked out. We don't uh, uh, want to see that. What I want to do is I want to uh, go to the, um, the back of the chapter and we're going to look at um, um, problem 94B, 94B on page 442 and let's work that problem together uh, which has some of the notes receivables and, uh, and, and, and other entries related to them. So uh, I'm going to pause it, uh, get a little data together for you and come back. Okay, you can see here, I hope, the same data you see on page 442, the uh, Gen X company uh, had created, um, had received six different notes during the year, uh, from January, January the 14th to December the 10th, uh, ranging in 30 to 90 days terms and interest rates from 4 to 8%. And we're going to compute the due dates and the interest at maturity for you. I've created a little a little calculator over here to help me do that. And uh, let's put the days uh, in the month. The first the first note was was issued in January, so there's 31 days in the month. The date of issuance was the 14th day, so there's 17 days running. It's a 30 day note, so the the final month will be the next month. 17 and 13 gives me 30 days so we can say 2 slash 13 slash 
15. That gives me the interest, the, uh, the, the due date. We can do that for the rest of them too. And let's see, this one is uh, March, so there's 31 days in March. 9th is the due date, I mean is the issuance date. It's going for 45 days. So, let me see here, get rid of that. That's 22, so another, uh, should have another 23 days. Oops. And that's right, so March uh, the 9th to April 23rd. And you can also uh, do a subtraction um, uh, or an addition in, in uh, Excel and just say this date plus 90 days and this date plus 75 days. Oops. Ooh. I'll try again. This date plus 60 days, and then I'm just going to hit copy that down. There we go. I can get rid of this little fellow over here now and get rid of the line. There we are. So there's the there are the due dates for these guys. I can figure that out. Uh, the interest at maturity is going to be um, the face amount times the the interest rate times the days that it's run 30 days um, divided by the number of days in a year and let's just make this 30 45 90 oops that seems to be weird 90 75 60 60 I probably hit something with another hand there that way I can calculate it I can use this to calculate it. I can say this uh, e this uh, equals the face amount times the number of days it's going to run times the interest rate divided by and let's go ahead and use a 360 day year and uh, we need to talk about that the, um, the uh, authors uh, oftentimes use a 360 day year to make calculations easy. It's called a banker's year. Uh, it actually uh, gives the receiver, well it, 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 it computes a little more interest than you would otherwise when you divide by 360 instead of by 365 or 366. Used to, they used to claim that it was for ease of computation back when there weren't calculators and computers and all that, but you know we have all those things sitting on our desks and you know we still do the 360 uh, day a year because um, it gives us a little more money. All right, uh, let's look back at this calculation and make sure we understand what we're doing. We're multiplying the face amount times the number of days that it's going to run the term of the note times the interest rate and that would give us an, an annual interest. So we take the annual interest divided by 360 banker's year number again and that gives us the um, uh, the interest uh, that's due at maturity. This will be spelled out in a, in a note receivable uh, the uh, the instrument itself it'll be it'll um, it'll spell out how you're going to compute that. I'm just going to bring that down and turn this into dollars so I can see it better Oops. and we have $110 even on the first note, $787.50 on the second note. Let me make it one more. Um, and on down. So those are the, those are the uh, amounts that are going to be due at maturity. So um, we need to do, um, uh, let's, let's journalize the entry. Let's journalize all these notes. It's going to be very simple. Um, the first note uh, is going to be, we're going to debit notes receivable and we're going to and we're going to cre uh, credit uh, I mean uh, some other account and let me just let me say how this usually happens um, 
Uh, a lot of times it happens because someone has an accounts receivable, or in, in their case, an accounts payable, and they can't pay it. They're not going to have the money on time, and they just they come to you ahead of time. They don't, you know, they don't let you come looking for them, but they'll say, you know, gee whiz, I'm not going to have this thirty-three thousand uh, dollars in the next couple of days, but by the end of the end of a month, I should have it. So can I get a thirty-day note? And you know, you weigh the pros and cons, kind of know how the guy has treated you in the past and what his credit history is and all that stuff kind of look at how his business is going and yeah you agree to do that or you don't and if you agree to do that then the account we're going to credit would be accounts receivable so we're going to debit accounts payable i mean account debit account debit notes receivable and credit uh accounts receivable so this would be the first note and i'm just going to use um the date and forgive me for not having a date date that works on this works right and we're going to debit notes notes receivable and in this case I, I, I do it almost like accounts receivable unless you have tons and tons of notes there's no reason uh, not to record the guy's name I don't know who these are so I'm just going to say note one uh, debit for thirty three thousand dollars um, I'm going to say accounts receivable note one. I don't know who that is, but I do know it's that note. Uh, this is to record. All right. So there we have the first note. The second note is going to be the same. And we're going to have, it's going to be $90,000. And we're going to do, we're going to assume, assume that we, we're doing this uh, for the same reasons, and it's uh, the 9th of March. And I'm going to go ahead and ooh, look at all the misspellings in that. I know I could do this better, but oops. Oh. and that gives me ninety. To record the second note and you can see how that's going to work the rest of the way down so let me go ahead and do those uh, without you having to suffer through it and then uh, we'll get back together in just a minute okay you'll see here on the screen that I've recorded all the notes I think I've done it correctly 30 whoops 33,000 uh, 90,000 48,000 16 36 and 24 uh, 33 90 48 16 36 and 24 that looks good that's uh that would read that that's just a very repetitive task of um, recording uh, all those notes now we're going to go back a second and it says that uh, in, in number two it says journalize the entry to record the dishonor of note three on its due date this is note three right here so let's keep that highlighted we'll go over to the other one and we'll look at note three and highlight it uh, there should be six hundred dollars six hundred dollars worth of interest due on that note so when uh, on uh, October the 10th we should receive from this person forty eight thousand plus six hundred dollars forty eight thousand six hundred dollars evidently he's dishonored the note so on the due date which would be right in here and I'm not gonna I'm, not, I'm, I'm just gonna well I might as well do that let me just go ahead and add us a, f a few lines mm, uh, October 
the 10th is the due date. Going to have to make that a little bit smaller to fit in there. That'll do, barely. And uh, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go ahead and, and, uh, and show you how you dishonor this note briefly here. And <clears throat> when somebody f uh, fails to pay the note payable, they've broken a contract. So we're going to take, we're gonna, the contract is now over. We've, we've run the distance. The contract is, as far as we're concerned, was good, but they didn't, they didn't honor it. So we're going to do, we're going to debit accounts receivable. And I don't know the guy's name again, but we're going to call it note three, whoever he is. Um, we're going to debit it for the total amount that he owes us now. He owes us $48,600. We're going to credit notes. Notes receivable, note three. Let's indent that. And I think most of them have two indentions, look like. That'll be forty-eight thousand. We can't uh, credit it for more than it was to begin with, so we're gonna. The rest of it is gonna be it's gonna be interest revenue, of course. Six hundred dollars, and I guess I could go ahead and put an E on the end of that. Oops. There you go, and now we have uh, re returned. the The note is done. It's, it's no longer valid. It's the the contract is over. He owes us the forty eight thousand six hundred. The good thing about putting it back in accounts receivable is it's now in a position where our um, our, uh, our accounts receivable clerks, or whoever is in charge of collections, will be calling him and aggravating him and trying to get the money from him. When a note receivable, it'll just kind of kind of lay there unless somebody pays attention to it. But in accounts receivable, there's a there's a method to collect that. There's a there's a there's a there's a way to to actively, as they say, engage the customer and see if you can't get some of that money out of him. Anyhow, so that's how you you do the entry to. Uh, to record the dishonoring of that note. Um, it says um, the, uh, for um, number three is journalized the adjusting entry to uh, record the accrued interest on notes five and six. But let's go ahead and, um, and look at these due dates here. Um, uh, let's just do one or two. Uh, the, let's do the first one. Um, the first note is due on 213 and it's going to be $110. So let's give ourselves a little room here. Uh, And we're going to re record the receipt of this note. It's going to be cash. Notes receivable, note one. And, and interest revenue. This and uh, let's put them all over here. Left align. They're not going to be bolded. Uh, we're going to debit cash. We're going to credit notes receivable and credit interest revenue I need another line there cash is going to be uh, $33,110 and notes receivable is 33000 and the interest revenue is one hundred and ten dollars.
to record the payment of note one. So all the rest of them are going to be that way too. You'll do the same thing for to record each of the notes as they're paid off or the payment of each of the notes as they occur. Okay, then we want to do the uh, instruction uh, number five to, or number three to, to journalize the entry to record the accrued interest on notes five and six now. So let's look at notes five and six. Five was entered on uh, December, uh, November the 15th and uh, six was on 12 on December the 10th. So let's let's figure that out again. We have um, 31 days in December. No, 30 days in November for this guy. Uh, it was issued on the 15th. Huh. Of course, that's 15 days left. It's a, and then we want to, and there's 31 days in, in December. So that's 46 days of interest that we're going to be recording on this guy right here. So, equals 36,000 times 46 days times, oops, times 8%. Uh, 360 and so we're going to record 368 dollars worth of interest uh, uh, accrued interest at the end of the year the next one has 31 days in the month 10th of the month there's 21 days and that is it there are no more days to work so whoops <laughs> look what I did Three sixty-eight. To make that 368. Now let's try again. 31 days in December, 10th of the month, and no more days. So, oops, 21 days equals oops, times uh, 6% times 21. Let's just leave it at 21 and not make it dependent on that square over that cell over there divided by 360 gives me $84 in interest that I need to um, need to record uh, the total of that ah, let's do it this way it's gonna be $449 so on December the 31st, I need to record $449 worth of interest receivable. You could do it individually by notes, but we're going to make it uh, uh, just one big lump sum. So 12, 31, uh, 13. We're going to go do interest receivable and uh, interest revenue Let's see if we can make this all a little better. This is, uh, needs to be indented. None of these need to be bold. This needs to be spelled correctly. And the amount is $449. And I'll just check that, 449 and that's my adjusting entry to record the interest due on the two notes that uh, were still running or still active had not been completed at the end of the year and that's uh, number five okay now 
uh, it says to rec let's record the entries to record the receipt of the amounts due on note five, note five, and note six, and uh, and we'll do that next. Let's go back over to the first spreadsheet, and we'll see that um, the due date is going to be uh, January the fourteenth, and there's going to be three hundred sixty-five dollars worth of um, of accrued interest on that note. So we're going to do it this way. We're going to go, um, pardon me for moving the microphone. Ones. I can't make these cells smaller all at one time. Okay, so we're going to go cash, uh, note, no. Uh, notes note 5 uh, so we have four accounts that we're going to have to be dealing with cash is going to be the debit it's going to get the bulk of the work and it's going to be again um, thirty six thousand dollars plus four hundred and eighty the notes receivable is going to be thirty six thousand dollars the interest receivable was three hundred and sixty five dollars Oops, that was some, and the difference is 480 minus 365. There's 115 dollars left over of interest revenue we haven't recorded. Now let's just check our entries there, and uh, let's uh, add those up to make sure. 36,480. I balance, and I should be able to say. Uh, Does not say receipt to receive record repayment of note five. The next note is note six. It's going to be on the eighth of February for twenty four thousand two hundred and forty dollars. I'm going to go ahead and make that small like the rest of them. We're going to. I'm going to go ahead and copy all this and I'm just going to edit what needs to be edited and as you can see you could make interest receivables dash note 6 but that's going to have to be a whole new account in your chart of accounts and I don't know if anybody really wants to fool with that but 24,240 if I remember receivable is 24 the interest receivable is $84 we'd already recorded at the end of the end of the year and the difference between 240 and 84 is hundred and fifty six dollars and that's to record the payment of note 6 I'm just going to check my math and 24 240 and I want to use my calculator here twenty four thousand dollars times 0.06 times 60 divided by 360 is $240. Just checking the math, that just looked a little bit high, but that's what it was. So that gives us all the entries. You've recorded the issuance of several notes. Uh, you've recorded uh, the payment that you received when a note matured. You've recorded the dishonor of a note right here. You've recorded uh, accrual 
at the end of the year of interest receivable and then you recorded the receipt of payment for two notes that were paid uh, after they straddled a year end so you've seen all the entries that can be done for notes receivable I want to I want to point out something to you again uh, for the uh, for the computation of the interest I want you to realize that it is the face amount it is the term of the note it's the interest rate all divided and then divided by 360 so that's going to be 24,000 times 60 days times 6 percent oops all divided by three hundred and sixty and if you do that gotta move my arms here you come with to come up with the amount of interest that you figured up above now I want to remind you that if I am figuring the interest on a note uh, that is not matured yet but I need to rec record the interest um, that's, uh, that's, that has accrued at the end of the year. I'm just going to replace this right here with the number of days from the, from the issuance of the note to the end of the year. And we compute that by knowing that there are 31 days in December, the month it was issued. It was issued on the 10th of the month. And so there are 21 days from the issuance to the end of the month, which is the end of the year. And uh, then I can just, then, and that gives me my uh, equation. 24,000, the face amount, times the number of days from issuance to the end of the year, times the interest rate, all divided by 360, will yield $84. And that's how we come up with the accrual of interest at the end of the year. So you should be able to compute both the interest uh, due on a note as it matures, the accrued interest at the end of the year, and following these uh, examples here, you should be able to then to record the entries for the receipt of cash after the year end so that uh, you can uh, remember to credit the interest revenue that you've, rec that you've accrued uh, I mean the interest uh, receivable, the receivable that you've accrued, and if you just look right here, 365 and 156. I uh, know uh, interest receivable is 365, and interest receivable of 84 gives me 449 dollars, and that was the interest receivable I had at the end of the year. So anyway, uh, that's the end of this. I hope you've enjoyed our little videos on the, the receivables chapter. I've got a couple more things to show you on a video in the next day or so, and um, then we'll be done with the semester.